Hello everyone, welcome to Node.js Crash Course 2021. In this video, we will learn everything to get you started with your first Node project. Before we dive into this video, I just want to mention, if you like this series, please give me a like and share. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. It means a lot for me. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the table of contents. We will discuss what Node is, why you should learn Node, how does Node.js work? Uh, we'll talk about some of the examples of Node uh, use cases, and uh, we will go ahead and install Node.js in our system. And uh, finally, we will go through the documentation of Node and uh, go through the core concept like global object, Node modules, we have some FS module, OS module, and at the end of this video, we'll be creating a web server. We'll be creating web server through just the default library that Node has. Also, we'll be installing through NPM uh, Express, which is a very popular Node framework. All right, so what is Node? Node.js is an open source and cross-platform JavaScript runtime environment. It is a popular tool for almost any kind of project. Node.js runs the V8 JavaScript engine, the core of Google Chrome, outside of the browser. This allows Node.js to be very performant. All right, so let's deep dive a little bit onto these two things, how Node.js actually work and what that is. You can think of Node.js as a kind of a wrapper. It's a runtime environment for JavaScript, and it's a wrapper for the V8 engine. So V8 coming from, it's an open source project. It's coming from the Chromium project that uh, Google Chrome uses, the modern Edge also uses, and Opera also uses. All right, so how does Node.js actually work? So let me go ahead and show you in, a, in the slide. So at the basic low level, the computer only understand binary code, which is one and zero. Okay, it's very cryptic. We cannot write program in this in this binary code one and zero. It's not readable at all. On top of this, what happens is that it's, it's something called assembly code. Now, this is somewhat readable, but still it looks like this. Um, so it's still, it's we can be pr programming on assembly code. Maybe you can, but it will take a lot of energy to do so. Hence, there is high-level programming language like JavaScript, Python, or Java, or c -sharp comes into play. Now, JavaScript, we can write program almost like plain English, right? But the thing is, those JavaScript, those programming logics that we're writing, that needs to be converted, compiled into this one and zero at the very bottom. Hence comes Node. So Node is a wrapper for V8 engine and V8 engine takes JavaScript project not objects and then it compiles it takes a hybrid process it takes it sometimes do interpret them and sometimes compile them make it really performant so and then it takes JavaScript code and then turn into machine code so that's how Node.js and V8 uh, works under underneath the hood Okay, so let me go back to the definition here. So there is another characteristic for Node.js. So Node.js app runs in a single process without creating a new thread for every request. Node.js provides a set of asynchronous input output primitives in its standard library that prevent JavaScript code from blocking and generally libraries in Node.js are written using non-blocking paradigms, making blocking behavior the exception rather than the norm. Okay, so let me explain what this means. Node.js pretty much works the same way like in the browser works. The browser through web APIs makes JavaScript asynchronous. JavaScript, you probably know this, JavaScript by default is a synchronous process. It it's, can do only one thing at a time. But through web APIs from browser, it can be asynchronous. Node.js also have the similar functionality. To understand the synchronous and asynchronous, I am going to link a video. Uh, it was a talk from JS conference. I'll link that in the description if you're not con uh, if you're not hundred percent on what asynchronous means. But I'm going to give you a little explanation how it works. 
So let me go to that particular slide. JavaScript is a single threaded programming language. That means it only has one call stack. So let's say this is our call stack. So the function one is going to run first and then function two and then function three. So it's going to do one thing at a time. So once function one gets called, it pops out of the call stack. Then it goes to function two. Now when function two gets called, it pops out the call stack as well. And then it goes to number function number three, which when it's complete, it also pops out of call stack. And now all the calls, all the function calls have been called. Now, the problem with that is what if the function one gets called, it finishes on, on time, that's good. Function two now, let's say it has some sort of fetch function or set timeout function or something that requires more time. Function two has maybe a fetch that it actually talks talking to a database to gather some data from the database, requesting the data and getting the data. It, it requires some time. So for this example, let's say five seconds to finish this function. So with synchronous process, what's going to happen in, within this five seconds? your program probably going to be in a stuck mode. It's not, it cannot pass the function two and go directly to function three It's going to stuck for five seconds and make your user wait for your functions to finish. And that's not something we want. So what happens with node API or also for the web API in the browser, they can run asynchronously. So basically what's happening. So function one gets called. And then function two, when it comes to function two, and this API actually sees that this is, might be a fetch uh, function, they go to immediately this, this node API area, making it easy for the JavaScript call stack to go to the next function, which is function number three. During this time, when function number three is uh, executing, so let's say this completes and it's done, this function two, when it gets resolved, it goes to some somewhere called task queue. And from the task queue, there is something called event loop. The event loop looks to the stack call stack and see where is, is the call stack empty. That's all it's looking for. Once the call stack, all the function calls are done, it's going to push that function two into the call stack and then call stack will call the function Hence, all the calls, all the functions have been called from the call stack. So this is a very basic explanation of how asynchronous JavaScript work. But check out that video uh, through that link. Uh, it actually explains better than me what I did just right here. All right. So what is NPM? So we talked about libraries here. So when you're going to install Node.js in your system, it will also going to install something called NPM, which is Node Package Manager. In Node Package Manager, there are millions of packages that developers actually created, the third part party libraries that we can use in our own project. And NPM kind of maintain what projects in a dependency in package JSON. And we're going to talk about NPM when we're going to install Express. And also when you're going to try to explain Node.js, you will see what NPM actually does. Okay, so now let's talk about why you should learn Node.js. Node.js has a unique advantage because millions of front-end developers that write JavaScript for the browsers are now able to write the server-side code in addition to the client-side code without the need to learn a completely different language. And it is huge. It puts the developers who are already writing JavaScript in a unique position where you can get into Node.js, which is the entry barrier is so minimal, it almost makes it it's a no brainer decision for anyone to get into Node.js. And maybe uh, if you're a front end developer, maybe uh, you know expand your horizon to become a full stack developer. Uh, and Node.js is a very mature uh, program and application. A lot of companies use Node.js for enterprise uh, applications. And also there are tons of jobs available as a Node.js developer. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what 
can you do with uh, Node? Now, Node.js can do, can do a tons of tons of stuff from writing, reading to a file, to creating a web server, to connecting to the database, to programming a robot with Johnny5 IoT platform. Uh, sky is the limit. It's you, you are the driving force here. You have the tool. Node.js is a tool and it make, gives you the power to create and you can do a tons of tons of stuff. All right, now let's enough talk about Node.js, uh, the theory. Let's go ahead and install Node.js programming in our system and go through the core concepts. So I want you to go nodejs.org. The link will be in the description. Once you're there, you will see 14.17 LTS and also 16.20 current. LTS stands for long-term support. If you want to download 14.17 LTS, feel free to do so. There's nothing wrong with it. But you, if you want the most current one, you can also download 16. One thing to remember though, if you click on here, long-term support schedule, you can actually see which versions are going to have long-term support and when it's going to get expired. Now you see that Node.js 14 right here is active and also it has long-term support uh, till you can actually see right here active maintenance end life would be about uh, 2023. So it has long-term support. 16 is current. It also will be good till 2024. So we are both, we are good with both of them. Now here on the top, if you look at this one is major Node.js version, enter current release status for six months, which gives library authors time to add support for them. After six months, odd numbered releases, 9, 11, etc., become unsupported, and even numbered releases, 10, 12, etc., move to active LTS status. So Node.js, they publish the odd number version, and those odd number version is basically to include some features that they are testing. And it has about six months or so um, expiration date. So if you want latest and greatest, and if you also want to experiment with these new features, you can download the own number Node.js versions, but just don't make any application, any project based on that uh, odd number Node.js because it might break once it's gonna get expired. So in this case, we are good with 14, or 16 as well. All you have to do is click on 16 and it's gonna open up. If you open this, it's going to open up like so. And you see that now it's giving me the installation, the setup wizard. And I can go through the setup wizard and install Node.js in my computer. Before I do that, I want to show you the terminal. What now I am on a Windows, as you can see, Windows system. I'm gonna use Windows terminal. If you don't have this one, it's an actually an app. You can go ahead to Microsoft Store, search for Windows Terminal, and you can install it from there. If you go down, there is a github.com Microsoft slash terminal. You can read more about this one if you want to customize your Windows Terminal. The Windows also has command prompt that comes in default. So if you want to use command prompt, feel free to do so. If you're using Mac, obviously you have a terminal in Mac as well. I'll be using Windows Terminal, especially Windows PowerShell. So what we will be doing is I'm going to first check what version of Node or if a Node already installed in my computer or not. So if I do Node, then space, let me make it a bigger, and then dash V, and now if I enter, you will see it's giving me right now, I have version 14.15.5, which is completely fine for this video. If you have a version 14, you should be okay. If you don't see a version number, that means you don't have Node.js installed in your computer. In that case, you have to go through this wizard and install Node.js in your system. All right, so after installing Node.js, if you do the same, run the same command in your terminal, node dash node space dash V, you would see the new version on your computer. Another thing on this Node.js website, 
they have a really good documentation. So if you go to docs and then go to guides right here, and if you go to introduction to Node.js, which is under Node.js core concept, it will open up to this particular website. And as you can see, this website also has night mode as well. So from here alone, you can get a lot of information about Node. You can you know, you can know about uh, the introduction of Node. You can actually see that there's how this is how easy to create a web server through Node, just through the HTTP modules. You can uh, read about the brief history of Node, how to install Node. Uh, this is if you are running uh, if you're running on Mac, then obviously you might have Homebrew, and you can do Homebrew install Node from there. So every information uh, that you might want to know uh, after watching this video, you can go ahead and uh, come here and see it and read more about it. I'll go ahead and just for ease of use, go ahead and give you this link as well. All right, I'm gonna go back to my terminal. Now, this is the reason I'm using a terminal because a lot of uh, command I'm going to run in order to run my node uh, application is going to go through the terminal. So in that case, you should really be familiar with, with your terminal. Now, I'm using Windows Windows PowerShell right here, Windows Terminal. You can, If you want, you can download it. I recommend it. It's really, it's really awesome. And uh, But if you want to stick with your command prompt, some of the syntax would be a little bit different on the command prompt on the Windows default, but a quick Google search will show you how to do things, okay? Um, so let me go ahead. So I'm gonna say CD, I'm gonna create a folder. And in that folder, uh, I will open up Visual Studio Code. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say CD, so CD stands for change directory. So I'm gonna go, I have uh, my all my projects in E drive. So I'm gonna say E colon, and I know I have a folder called projects. So I'm gonna say that, and if I enter, now you can see I am in that E drive and in the projects folder. Now in the projects folder, I want to go to, I have another folder that is just for YouTube videos. So I'm gonna say YouTube change directory to YouTube. Now I am in the projects folder and into YouTube folder. Now if I do LS and enter, it's gonna list out all the files that I have in that YouTube folder, okay? Now I wanna make, in this folder right here in the YouTube, I wanna make another, another file or another folder. To do that, I'm gonna say make, make dir, so it's basically gonna be M-K-D-I-R, so it stands for make directory. And I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna say node.js, node-js. And if I say do that, you see that it created a folder for me in, in that YouTube. So I'm still in the YouTube folder, in the root folder, YouTube folder. And in that folder, I have now a folder called node.js. Let me go ahead and get, get into that node.js folder. So I'm gonna say CD into node.js. Now, as you can see, it's right now I'm in my projects, YouTube in Node.js. Now from Node.js folder, if I say code space dot and enter, it is going to open up Visual Studio Code in that particular folder for me. All right, as you can see here, I have my Visual Studio Code open. Here's in the folder. Let me go ahead and make things a little better to see for you. It's 14 right now. And that should be good. And here, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to create a file and that's going to be index.js. Now in this index.js file, I'm gonna write my JavaScript that will run in a node. So, so far we have been writing our console log, our JavaScript logics, and we are debugging through developer tools in Chrome. So we're gonna do, we can do the same thing, but our terminal now kind of will be, will become our develop dev tools. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear all things in my terminal right here. I'm also going to show you a terminal that is integrated to Visual Studio Code. 
I'll show you later, but right now I'm going to just use um, this Windows terminal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, simply say console.log and console.log, let's say in quotation, I'm going to pass it a string, which is going to be hello world. Now, if I save this and in this terminal, one thing I have to make sure that I am in the same folder as well. So my terminal is, is in the same folder with my index.js. Now I have got to run this file. Node needs to run this. So this is JavaScript. Okay. I'm doing console.log hello world. Simple like console.log is, is kind of same like a print statement. Like if you're coming from Python or if you, you have experience with, um, maybe Java, the standard out. Um, this is same as print in Python. That's going to be console log. It's going to console log the hello world, but node has to run this. Okay. Because as you remember, I showed you node needs to compile this and then print it out in the terminal. So how can node do that in order to run this file? All I have to say is node and then space and the name of the file, which is going to be index.js. Now, if I enter it, you see that it is now printed on hello world printed on my terminal. All right, so let's talk about global object. So in the browser, if I go to the console of a dev, dev tools, Chrome dev tools, if I say window, you can see that window is a global object. If I enter it, it has a tons of applications, tons of functions that are available for us. It's a, so this is called a global objects that is available in the dev tools in the in the web API in the form of web APIs. All right, so Node.js has similar uh, objects and it call uh, global. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look what this global object is. So I'm going to say global. I'm going to console log this. If I save this, go to my terminal, and then I'm going to clear this and uh, run node index.js. And you can see that global actually has uh, tons of function as well. Now, there is one difference from Windows global object uh, browsers than the node.js global object is that uh, node global object don't know anything about the document, okay? Web API, they deal with DOM manipulation and everything. Node.js don't know anything about this. And Node.js don't have to know because we are never going to do any DOM manipulation through Node.js. For that, we have the dev tools and uh, the browser API. So if you do something like this instead of, instead of go, global, if you do something like document dot query selector, if I save this and run node index.js, it's going to give you an error. It's going to say that document is not defined because node.js have no idea what document is. All right, so that is your global object. Let's talk about modules. So node.js works with modules even before module was a thing in JavaScript. So that's why now, Node.js actually came up with, uh, they call it common JS. So in order, so let me create another fold, another file. And this file will be called hello.js. Okay. Now hello.js will have a function. It's going to be a simple function. We'll call the function hello, which will just do console print out the word hello world. All right. Now this, hello, let's get rid of this one right now. So I want to get this function. I want to get it right here in the index because I'm going to run index file, which will come, which will get every other modular JS that I'm going to create. I want everything to be available in my index.js. Now, I can do that with the default way, which is Node.js default way, which is called common JS by simply saying, I need to export this function out of this file. I have to say module dot exports equal, it's going to be hello. And that's it. Okay. Now this function is exported out of this file. 
Now here in the index, I have to get that function, take that function. So what I have to do is I have to create a variable. I'm going to name this variable the same as the function. I'm going to call it hello. And here I'm going to say const hello, that's a variable equals to let me assign a require and in the parent, uh, in the parentheses, in the quotation, I have to specify the path. It's going to be the relative path for that hello JS file. So dot slash means, as you can see, already Visual Studio Code is telling me that hey, there is a file named hello in in your folder. So dot slash means you. I'm looking in the current folder. Okay, current folder, which is Node.js. And I'm going to click on here. So now I have access to this hello. Now simply if I now call hello, save it, and then go back to my terminal. Now let me clear and then run the same node dash index.js. I'm going to click on my up key up key on my keyboard that will give me the last command. And the last command was clear. And then before that, if I keep pressing, it's going to give me the node index.js. Now, if I enter it, you see that I'm still getting hello world. Now, hello world is not coming from index, but it's coming from hello. That's I'm requiring my index and then printing out. So this is what the default way to work with node.js using common JS module system with require. Now, anything else, maybe you are working with your front end application and you're working in, let's say, Vue.js or a React.js. Now, Vue, React, or any type of modern uh, framework, they would use the modern JavaScript syntax, which is ES6 syntax of import and export. You can use import and export with Node.js. There's two ways to do that. So in Hello.js, as you can see, if there's a three little dots under the module, it's actually telling me if I hover over it, that file is a common JS module. It may be converted to an ES6 module. So Visual Studio Code is actually telling me that, hey, if you want to convert this to import export, you can do that. Now to do this, the, there's two ways. The first way would be, let's go ahead and change the file. I have to change both of these files name uh, to give this extension called MJS. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and rename that. And I'm going to say, instead of just JS, I'm going to say MJS, hello.mjs. And this one also going to say that, hey, update imports for hello MJS. So VS Code wants to automatically uh, update this one. I'm going to say yes, go ahead and do that. Cool. Index.js, I'm also going to do that same thing. I'm going to say rename and then MJS. Okay. So let me go ahead and quickly fix this one. Convert to ES6 mod module. That is going to be export default hello instead of module.exports. And in index, Instead of this one, you see that I also have a quick fix right here. So it's going to be just regular ES6 syntax, which is import hello from that file right there. Now let's see if it works. So MJS extension means module JS. Okay, that's all it does. There is another extension available, which is CJS, which is common JS, but you never have to use CJS because by default, Node.js uses common JS. Now, if I go back and let me clear this and let me see if I can run the same file. Now here, you notice I don't have index.js anymore. I actually has index.mjs. So let me go ahead and, and enter. And you see that it is working as usual. Hello world is printing out with import and export syntax. So that's the first way you can use an extension with MJS. I personally don't want to use MJS, just my, just my personal um, preference. What I instead do, I'm going to go back to renaming this. Yes. Go back to renaming that as well. So I still have uh, in, uh, index.js and hello.js. Now, if I keep this and 
change nothing index let's say import and hello Im, uh, export now if i try to let me make sure i uh, save everything now if i try to run the same file well because i ran mjs there is no mjs anymore there is index.js so now if i run this you see it's actually giving me an error it's giving me a warning it's telling me to load an ES module set type module in the package.json or use the .mjs extension. So I already show you how to use that mjs extension. Now I'm going to show you how you can set type module in your package.json. All right. The easiest way to integrate a package.json file to your project is going to your terminal. I'm going to clear this and make, making sure that I'm on the same folder, which is Node.js, what I'm gonna do is npm init, okay? Now, remember, npm comes with your node. It, it's integrated all together. So npm init, if I enter it, it's going to ask me a bunch of questions. It's gonna create a package on, package JSON file for me, but it will it, it, it will ask some questions. For example, it's gonna say, hey, what do you want your package name to be? I can say node uh, JS enter is going to ask me, do you want the version to be 1.0.0? I'm like, yes, description. I don't want any description at this point. Entry point. What's your entry point? Basically, it means what's your main file that you're going to export, which is going to be index.js. I'm going to say yes, test command, nothing, nothing. And just keep pressing yes. Author, let's say let's build. And the license I see, that's fine if I, and then this is the object. This is called JSON object, right? And it's saying, is this okay? This looks good. I'm going to say yes, enter. You see now I do have a package JSON file right here. If I go into that package JSON, you see the same object that I was seeing in the terminal. So I have a name here. I have a version. I have a description. I can write everything. I can even change this right away here. It's just, it accept, expects strings, okay? Now, this is one way to do it. There's another way. Um, if, if you don't want to, like, press enter a bunch of time, there's a short way to do this. I'm going to go ahead and delete this folder to show you. Here, I'm just going to say npm init. Init is short for initialization. Space. I'm going to, this is called flag. I'm going to flag Y. So dash Y, basically saying that, hey, I'm going to say yes to all of your question. Just make me a package JSON right away. So now if I enter, you see this, it's automatically gave me a package JSON and it's taking the name for the project name from the folder name. And that's good. That's what I want. Now, this is the package JSON. Now, here in the package JSON, I have some options. I have some key value pairs. So key, I have the name, value. I also have a script that is actually, the value is the object itself. And then I have some keywords, author. Let's go and change that author to let's build. And then license. Now, here, I can tell Node.js that, hey, I want to use ES6 module. Okay, so you can think of package JSON as of like your settings for your projects. So all I have to do since it's a JSON, so it almost like a JavaScript object. The difference is that your key also needs to be a string. So I'm going to comma and I'm going to say string. I'm going to say type. And then you see that Visual Studio Code is actually giving me what do you want to use? Common JS is the default value. Do you want a module? So I'm going to say, hey, I want to use module. I'm going to click that. So there I specified type of module in my package JSON. So if I save this now, that's all I have to do. I can just close this. I never have to go to the package JSON unless I am installing something or I want to change something. So right now I don't have to use MJS. I don't have to do nothing. I can just use export default or import hello from hello.js. And now if I go back, I'm going to say clear. Let's go back to index node index.js and see if it works. There you go. It works. It's not, it doesn't give me the error anymore. So now you know how you can use either the common JS that's default for node.js or the import export ES6 
uh, syntax for importing. For the rest of the video though, I am going to stick with, I'm gonna take this type of module out, save. I am going to stick with CommonJS just because it comes with default and there are so many Node.js program out there that's written in CommonJS. All right, just for that reason, I'm gonna stick with CommonJS in this video. All right, so let's talk about a module from Node.js which is called FS, which is state, uh, stays for file system. So what I have to do is call const FS equals to require and in quotation is gonna be FS, so that's the FS module. And here, uh, what I can do with the file system is I can read from a file, I can update from a file, I can also delete uh, a file. So in this particular folder, let me create a text file, which is going to be, I'm gonna say hello.txt. Now this is just going to be a te text file. Let me rename this, I think I just did TX, so TXT. Okay, hello.txt file. So from here, I'm going to just say hello world, save it. All right, so I got myself a uh, hello txt file. Let me see if I can read from that. So I'm gonna say fs dot, I will say read. Now you can see that it's actually giving me options what I can do with this. So I'm gonna say read a file. You can also see the read file also have another one that's called read file sync. Now in Node.js, what sync actually means that this read file sync is not asynchronous. It is a synchronous process. So it's gonna wait. It's gonna do like one thing at a time. So if you want that, then you should use read file sync. But regular read file is an asynchronous process. So I'm gonna use read file right here. Open up parentheses. In this parentheses, the first argument or parameter that I'm gonna pass in is within quotation is the tech, the file that I'm trying to read from, the relative path from the file. So I can just do this and hello .txt. Since it's in the same file, I can do like this one as well, hello .txt. Then comma, and then the second one is just for uh, decoding, is gonna be utf8, I have to say that, okay, utf8, follow that. And then it also takes a callback function. And in that callback function, uh, it will first take error and the data. The data would be the data that we're gonna read from the file. Our error is gonna be if there's any type of error happened, I wanna know about that. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna open up an if else statement. I'm gonna say if error, so if there is any error, console dot error error so console dot error it okay let me know the stack now console log and console dot error is different uh, in node.js than in the browser in the browser console log and console error is just add some icon so if you say console dot error is going to just change the color of the console log and give you some alert and icon. But console error, it actually puts out to our standard out error stream in Node.js. So if error, give me the error stack, else console.log the data. I want to log whatever in there. So hello txt has hello world. I want to print out that hello world in there. So I'm gonna save this, go back to my terminal. I'm gonna clear my terminal right here, go back to my command node index.js to run the file, enter it, and you can see that I am now reading hello world from that particular file. If I say something else, let's say, Hope you are doing great. Save this, come back. Now if I run the file one more time, as you can see that it is reading the whole sentence. Hello world, hope you're doing great. Okay, so now we know how to read from a file through fs.read file. 
What if I want to add something to that file? Let me go ahead and uh, comment out this. And then here, let me give myself a data, a variable I'm going to call data. And in that data, I will have the string that I want to add to that particular file, hello.txt. So I'm going to open up a string. I'm going to say, please subscribe if you are not. Okay, so that's my string. And I'm going to append it to that file. So I'm going to say fs dot append file. Now again, you see there's two append file and append file sync. Sync is for synchronous operation. Append file is the asynchronous process. And here I'm going to uh, first specify which file I want to append it to, which is going to be hello.txt. And then the second one is actually going to uh, going to take a string, the what string I want to add it to. Now I have put this string in this variable called data. So I'm going to just pass data. And the third one will take a callback function, which will have error. If there's any error happening, then I want that I want to know about this one. So I'm going to copy paste this one if error console dot error error else else console log I just want to know um, now I'm just going to print out that uh, data added okay so let me go to my terminal right now and if I run this file it's giving me that data added. Now let's verify. Let's go back to hello.txt. And as you can see here, I have hello world. Hope you're doing great. Please subscribe if you're not. So it has been added to our file. So pretty cool. We can do add stuff to our file here through our file system. Pretty powerful. I'm going to go ahead and comment this one as well. I'm going to keep this data here. Now I read from it. I append it. Now let's go ahead and let's see if I can create a completely new file. So to do that, and here I'm going to say, I'm going to give it a different a string. I'm going to say like and share. So this is a new string and I'm going to say fs. So I'm going to create a file from scratch. So I'm going to say fs, s dot, it's going to be a write file. So I'm going to write a file. I'm going to call this one, let's say, subscribe.txt. Subscribe.txt. And this file will have this data, which is like and share. So I'm going to say data. And again, it's also going to take a callback, which will take an error if there's any. And I'm going to go ahead and just copy the same thing. If error console.log console.error error. And if there is no error, I'm going to say file created. So if I save this, go back to my terminal and note, and it's giving me file created. Now look at this. I do have a file now that's called subscribe.txt and which have the string like and share. Awesome. So I read, write, and update this. The, th the last thing remain is to delete. So let's go ahead and delete the first file right here, hello.txt. How can I do that? So I'm going to say fs dot unlink. And here I'm going to say the file that I want to unlink, which is going to be hello.txt. And uh, here I'm gonna, uh, I basically will have a function which will have an error. Nothing else. There's no data. There's nothing else. And here I'm going to copy this to error. I'm going to say delete it. File deleted. So if I save this, go back, uh, index run is saying file deleted. And as you can see right here, there is no hello.txt anymore. Perfect. All right, one more OS, one more module I want to show you that's called OS. Uh, so let's go and const, I'm going to go 
add and comment up this one is going to say I'm going to call this again OS require OS uh, and save it so you can go back to the node documentation and you can see there is no JS OS module I would have to require OS and it has some really nice features so let me go ahead and show you the first one I want to show you is I believe is CPU S so if I do now um, let me see OS dot CPU S right here and just invoke that function let me clear my terminal go back to node index and that it doesn't really happen because I did not print anything so let me go ahead and print it okay let me go back and there we go you can see that the CPU so I'm running an i7 Intel uh, CPU of two two gigahertz so it's actually giving me uh, some of the information of my uh, system right here which is pretty cool let me clear this uh, another one I can do is call home der home der so if I save this one now now and then open up windows.x it's actually going to give me the current path I'm in so home home directory path and uh, one more thing I want to show you is going to be platform it's also can give me a platform which platform I'm in and that is going to be I'm in win 32 version okay so now I want to show you something else it is called their name so I'm going to console.log and in parentheses I'm going to say underscore two times double underscore I'm going to say their name now if I do that if I save this now let's go back to my terminal and I have to make sure that I am uh, writing node index dot js and if I run this you see that their name actually prints out the path of this file so it's in my uh, eDrive projects and YouTube folder and node.js folder so we will be using uh, this dir name if you ever want to get access to the path of this uh, file you can use a dir name all right so that's is some of the modules a couple of modules that you can use in node there are plenty more you can check out uh, from uh, the node documentation all right now let's go back to our uh, PowerPoint and then let's take a look we're gonna talk about something called streams and buffer so streams and buffer if you want to uh, learn more about it we're gonna go into the node.js stream uh, node.js uh, documentation and right here if you, you can look at there is a thing called buffers and streams you can read more about this one so in this chart right here browser request for data and then data coming from a source okay now if this data is small enough then it, it will not take uh, much time because the data will just come from the source and then goes to the browser but if the data set is really large then this data will take a lot of time because first of all all the data will come to this whole space fill it up and it will require a lot of time and then come back and it is uh, one one stream come back and dump it all the data at the same time in the browser now it is a problem because it might take a ton of time if you're dealing with a lot of data now with the streams and buffer what happens is that instead of sending data all at one time they are what call they're creating a stream so it's going to be a continuous process continuous streams whenever the data is available it's just going to send it in uh, instead of sending it all together at one time in a big in a, in all whole form it sends out a chunk of data small data within that stream so whenever browser requires the data it just gets the data it gets a chunk of data at the same time the stream is there so it's coming from here then here then here 
So a great example for this is when you're watching a YouTube video. So when you're watching a YouTube video, uh, it, it buffers, right? So it actually trying to request more data to uh, show you. If it's ever stops and say buffering, it means it's actually waiting for the next chunk. So it's not waiting for the whole data to get processed, but it is relying on the open stream where data is coming through whenever it needs to. So that's the theory of streams and buffer. If you want to know more about it, of, of course, go check out the documentation in Node. But let's take a look in, in the file in action. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I already have a file that's called stream.js and we'll be using the same FS module for this one. I'm going to create const FS equal to require and it's going to require the FS module. And here I'm going to create a, a, a variable and I'm going to say read stream like so. And uh, it is going to create, so FS dot create read stream and it's going to read it from a file okay so i already have a file i call it big data dot txt so if i click on here you can see that it's, it's all dummy data but it's a, a lot of data as you can see it's a bunch of data right here in this particular file so to read from this file it's going to take some time so we're going to do this through the stream process. We're going to say fs.create a read stream and I'm going to give it the file name what it needs to read from. So I'm going to say it's going to be dot slash big data and dot slash is the current folder. The big data is all in the current Node.js folder. So I'm going to say dot slash current look in the current folder big data dot js and that's it for now. OK, so it's going to read, it's going to create a read stream from this file right here. All right, now I'm going to say read stream and I'm going to say dot on open in parentheses. Now, this dot on is same as an event listener you might be dealing, uh, dealt with while uh, doing do DOM manipulation. So it's like a click event handler. So this is also an event. So read stream dot on it listens for this one right here so it in the parentheses uh in quotation i'm going to say data so it's going to give it's going to listen for for a data okay this is the uh, and it also takes a callback function and in that callback function i'm going to console log i want to show you what data is actually passes at at one at a time all right it's going to give us a chunk okay because i I show you that it instead of sending all the data at the same time, it sends a little bit of chunk of the data um, whenever it needs. OK, so read stream dot on is an even listener. It's going to listen for the whole data here and it's going to give us a chunk of the data. And what can we do with this? I can console log to show you what's happening so I can I can do this console dot log chunk. Now to separate them, I can also do console dot log here in the in the. Uh, in the quotation, like a, just to see that this is going to be, this is a new chunk. So you can actually separate them from other chunk of data. Okay. So if I save this one, let's say what happened if I run this file. Now, remember that this file is all in stream.js. So I have to say node stream.js. Now, if I run this, it is going, it is giving me an error. Now let's debug this let's take a look what happened it's telling me that there's no uh, big data .js file absolutely because it's not a js file it is a txt file uh, text file all right perfect so save this let me go ahead and clear this and run the file again. Now this is going to be node stream.js. Now if I enter, now you can see it's it's giving me a chunk of data instead of all of them. Now you see that it is actually giving me an array of uh, numbers. Now these numbers are actually positions uh, of of those letters. So I can I can actually see convert them to string um, to see what actually I'm getting. So I can do it um, in two ways. I can simply say chunk dot string 
and save it. And now if I run it again, it, it's going to give me all the chunk of data right now. As you can see, it's a big chunk right here. And this is the new chunk and I am getting all the uh, dummy data that's reading from the big data.txt file. Okay, so I can do this chunk dot two string. I also can do it instead of calling two string here. I also can give uh, option right here. So I'm going to say comma and open up uh, curly braces. And here I'm going to say encoding. I'm sorry, enc encoding UTF eight. Now, if I save this and clear this, run this again, you see that I am actually getting the exact same thing. Exact same thing, new chunk. So I can encode this one in, in UTF-8. All right, awesome. So let's clear this, um, clear my console here. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and create another. So I'm going to write it. I'm going to write, I'm going to make it a, um, duplicate this, I'm going to say write stream. And here, instead of create stream, I'm going to say create write stream. Now, I want to take the data from the big data dot txt and write it in a new file. So here, I'm going to say, just create a new file for me, just as we saw in, the, in our previous example. But in this time, I'm going to say chunk data dot txt so create a file called chunk data dot txt and write the data from the big data in in terms of chunk so if i'm saving it and after this let's do this let's go ahead and um i will do write stream i'm going to call this one right here write stream dot write uh, write uh, chunk okay now before writing the chunk I want to do, I want to do the same kind of thing just to show you that uh, there's going to be a new line, right? There's going to be a new line. Uh, basically say new chunk. Okay, escape this. This is it's going to go in a new line. So I can comment this out. And let's see if I run this, there should be a file that call chunk uh, that's called chunkdata.txt. So here, if I run this file right here, you can see that it created chunkdata.txt. And if I go here, you see that it is now new chunk, and we have a new chunk. If I search with new chunk, there's another one right here as well. So I can do this. So creating the stream, so it's going to instead of um, waiting for the whole data. If I'm dealing with a bunch of data, I can create a stream uh, with this one, which deals with a buffer. All right. So I'm going to show you one more here. I'm going to show you how to deal, how to write all this in just one single code using pipe. So I have all these two things. I want to read from a particular file, which is big data tech txt, and write it in chunk data dot txt. So instead of doing all this, I can comment this out. I can simply say read stream dot pipe and in the parentheses I'm gonna say write stream okay and I'm gonna save this I'm gonna delete the chunk data right here because I want to show you that it actually works so there is no chunk data it's gonna do the exact same thing like all this here so if I now save go back to my terminal and run Stream.js, look at that. We have chunk data one more time and it's doing the exact same thing. All right, so that's what uh, streams and buffer in Node.js. All right, now let's talk about what is a web server. Before we dive into that, let's talk about what is front-end development is and what is a back-end. 
Okay, so I'm going to give you an analogy of a restaurant. Let's say you went to a restaurant and you are looking at a menu. And this menu has, you know, the food pictures, the ingredients, the price is, is really well organized and designed. And it has all the information that you need to make a decision of the food that you want. And think of this menu as your website. This is going to be your front end website, right? Okay, so once you know you have the menu and you decide that okay this is the food i want what do you do you order it to a waiter or waitress or a server let's call it a server server takes your order okay now server takes your order then go to the kitchen with your uh, order and then talk to the chef chef takes the order and he creates it he makes it with the ingredients he takes it from refrigerator and all kinds of stuff he he does his thing and then gives the food to the uh, server and the server brings the food on your table. And as a user, you are only ordering from the menu and you're seeing the food on your table now. You don't know anything about what happened in the kitchen and what's been uh, the server's doing all this time. So that is literally the server, it gonna be node server, okay? So node server, it takes a request from your front end website and it sends the respond with the data, okay? In, in this case, in the web world, your food gonna be the data that you requested. Now, node server, how to get the data? It does get the data by creating this communication stream with the database. Uh, in our example, it's going to be the kitchen. So node server talks to the database, gets the data, and then send it out to the front end website. The server also remember when it gets the request, sometimes let's say you're in a restaurant and you order a food and then the server is like, you know what, I don't really have this food available today. Uh, do you like something else? And that could be known as, let's say, a status code. Okay, so server error, the status code, okay? So node server does the same thing through a status code. If its status code is 200, that means yes, we have that food available and we'll get it to you. If it's the 400 or 500, that means something happened, we don't have the food, okay? It's a simple uh, example to understand what front end and back end is. So the back end would be the node server, the database, everything that you don't see, everything's happening, is consist of your back end development. All right, so let's go ahead and create a node server. So I'm going to go ahead and here's a file. I call it a server.js. Here I'm going to show you how easily you can create a web server through node.js. I am going to go to the documentation and uh, here build an HTTP server and they have uh, an example right here. And this is this is simply this is the, this is all the code that it requires to create a server. All right, so the first thing is we're gonna uh, use an HTTP module from Node. So I'm gonna say const HTTP equals to require, and it's gonna be HTTP, and that's the module we want. And from here, I'm gonna create another variable. I'm gonna call this server. And here I'm going to initialize HTTP dot create server. Okay, this is the function it gives us. It's going to create a fun uh, server for us. Now in this server, like I said, uh, a server takes a request and also send out response. So it's going to say request, and I'm going to use the shorthand. I'm going to say rec instead of request and res instead of response. So it's going to it's going to deal with re request and response, and this is an error function. And I'm going to add some options here. It's going to do something with that request and send the a response. I'm going to come back to it. But right now, it's, it's going to do something, okay? An option. But this server, it needs to be a continuous server, right? The server needs to be listening all the time. Now, how can we do this? So let's say server.listen. I'm going to say server.listen. And here... I can specify a port number. So in this case, I'm gonna say 5,000. So what is a port? Your machine, your uh, computer or anything, uh, there, it has a tons of ports available. You can see four, five, four, five, 5,000, 3,000, all, all sort of port. Now, right now, 5,000 is available, I know. I usually use 5,000 for my server whenever I'm building application and nothing is going on, nothing is running on that port. 
So I am going to use 5,000. Okay, now there's another way, instead of hard coding this one, I can actually create a variable, I'm gonna say port, and this doesn't have to be all capitalized. I do it because uh, process.env.port is capitalized. I'm gonna show you right now. So I'm gonna create, there's another way to, instead of hard coding, I can make this port uh, dynamic by creating a, a variable, I'm gonna say const port. So go 5,000 if it's available, or, okay, in JavaScript, this is or, do process dot env dot port now what this what this process dot env dot port means process dot env dot port means is that if you want to deploy your server code to uh, let's say Heroku app now Heroku might not have 5000 port available and that way if you're hard coding 5000 your server will never listen because Heroku app does not have 5000 available for you so that's why you want to make it dynamic so the port you are basically saying hey use 5000 if it's available if not then whatever available use that so process.env.port will store whatever the port is available for your deployment Heroku app gives you all right so now instead of hard coding this one i'm going to just say port here now this one also takes a callback function and this is what i'm going to do i'm just going to console.log and i'm going to uh, open up a template string i'm going to say listening on i'm going to say variable this port number okay so once i'm going to run this server.js it should open up the port and should listen to on 5000 and it should tell me the listening on port 5000. Let's see what happens. I'm going to go back to my terminal on and this time I'm going to say node uh, server.js because this is a new file right here and if I enter it you see that listening on 5000 and it doesn't give me an error anymore because it is a continuous process. I have to get out of this process this process is open how can i do that i can just say Control c and it's going to end the process so whenever it's listening on 5000 that means it's listening it's a continuous process all right so this port is now listening whatever we are going to send them all right okay so what do i want to send them so let's go back to the documentation as you can see here we can set uh, various things we can set a status code the status code 200 that I talked about before when a server said you know what yes that food is available here I can give it to you that could be a 200 that's an okay status code if it's not maybe it's going to be a 500 or it can be a 400 it's going to give you some sort of error okay and then we can set head header it is going to be content type it's going to be a text HTML because you're gonna send an HTML right here. So let's go back to your Visual Studio code and uh, put this in the test. So first I'm gonna say rest, the response, what type of response it should do. Uh, it's gonna say response dot status code first. And I'm gonna say equal to 200, okay? And then I'm gonna say response dot set header. Uh, and what is a header? Header is is going to be um, content type and text HTML. I'm going to show you what, uh, where to check for this one. So I'm going to say in, in quotation, I'm going to say content and see that content type is going to be sentence gate. So the first letter will be capitalized content dash type. And the next would be quotation text slash HTML because this is what I want to send it to you. Basically, I'm telling the browser that, hey, uh, when I get your request, this is 200, I'm listening, everything's good, and I'm sending you, telling the browser that the content that I'm sending you, it's going to be an HTML, text HTML, so render is as such, okay? And at the end, I'm gonna say res.end with quotation, and I can actually put HTML code in here so I can actually do h1 like so and in this h1 I can say hello world world okay now save it save this file in my terminal you see that I already 
got out, it's not listening anymore. Every time I do changes, I have to get out of the process and restart my uh, server. So I'm gonna go ahead and do node server.js and it's saying listening on 500. So let's go back to my Chrome browser one more time and refresh the page. And now you can see that I have hello world printed out on the browser itself. Now, whenever you're putting an address in the address bar, what the browser is doing, it doing a get request. Whenever, whenever I'm refreshing, it's doing a get request. Hey, give me something, give me an HTML. And it is in the 5,000, it is connected to this particular server and I am sending hello world. Now all this set header and 200, you can actually see it in the dev tools. So if I go here, that's the dev tools. And if I go here to network, and as you can see right here, localhost, and if you click on hit here, you can see headers and request URL. So it actually did a request in this URL right here, which is localhost 5000. Uh, localhost means your machine, okay? It, it's like 127.0.0.1. Localhost means your machine. Localhost 5000. Request method, it's a get method. Okay, it's doing a get request. And the status code is 200, okay? And you can see it's green because that's what I status code, I set it in this file right here. And content type, this is the content type and I'm saying text HTML. So that's why this is going to be h1. I can also do something like this. I can do uh, p tag and it's going to render it like so. So I'm going to I'm going to say lorem ip, ipsum. So if I save this, now remember every time I save something, I have to get out of the process and then run the server again to see the change. Now, if I refresh this, now you can see, I can see Lorem Ipsum printed out and it is in the paragraph tag. All right, so this is a very simple example how you can create a web server just using um, node, uh, Node's default way of doing things. You can also uh, uh, use static, uh, create their templating or uh, uh, language called EJS, embedded JavaScript, I believe. Um, I don't like to do this. I like to create uh, a client. My client is, is in a different folder and my server side code is in a different folder and they talk to each other through endpoints. So we'll be creating endpoints um, in Node.js web server. Those endpoints you can think of as like a, a like a port, different port. So for a get request, you, you go find one get request endpoint, get method endpoint. For a post request, if you want to post it, if you want to save it to a database or something, you have an endpoint that is deals with post request. So that's what web server actually does. It's all it does is take a request and send some response. All right, like I promised you, I will show you how you can uh, use a framework that's called Express, okay? And uh, let's get rid of, uh, let's comment this out, actually. Let's comment all this out. And let me go back to my um, terminal. I'm gonna uh, get out of this process, clear this, make sure I am in the same folder. And here, I'm going to install an Express. So right now, if you go back to my file, here I have the big test, uh, big data txt, hello index, and package JSON. Now I'm going to install this Express framework into my application, and you will see there are a lot of things will happen. There is going to be a node module. There's going to be so right now if you go to package.json, as you can see, the main is the index.js means that's basically start when I say node uh, index.js. This is what's exactly running. You will see a lot of other stuff that's going to add up to the package.json. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to say npm install, and I can do it short, just I. I'm going to say express, okay? And I'm going to do save, dash dash save. Uh, and then if dash dash save means save it as a dependency. Now, if I click on here, it's going to install it in this particular folder here, Node.js. And as you can see, immediately as a dependency, it's showing dependency is, uh, is showing me that Express is available in my package.json. All right, now I have Express installed in my system. 
and let's go ahead and do this const express require express as usual express require and i'm going to say express like so and now i'm going to say const app just like the server that we did um, previously i'm going to create a variable i'm going to call app and initialize express like so all the functions express and everything will be available now into the app i'm going to say uh, app let's create actually the port const port equals to i'm going to make it capital equals to 5000 i'm not going to use the process.env uh, for this example and here i'm going to say app dot listen and uh, listen to the port takes a callback function so i know it's connected i'm going to say console console.log backticks listening on this port now what should it listen to is going to listen to app dot get so uh, here instead of server equals to HTTP create server it also it already creates that you can now also uh, basically say app dot get that means it's going to deal with the get request and this is what it does I'm gonna first say that quotation and then slash so it, when it's slash or when is the root folder this is the 5000 right localhost 5000 when it's in let's we're going to create we're going to say uh, localhost 5000 as a home when it's in a home directory or just a slash nothing here do this so obviously take the request and then uh, respond and arrow function like so and i'm just going to send out a json object saying hello world because usually this is how i work in my front end folder i will have a let's say a, a react app in the front end and i will deal with my server side code based on this endpoint so this is going to be an endpoint which is which sends out hello world whenever you go to localhost 5000 to the slash all right now if i save this one let's go to my terminal and run a node server.js and you see the listening on 5000 let's go back and you see I have hello world right now as a JSON object printed out on my website. So that's all good. So I don't want to overwhelm you too much. I definitely planning to make a full stack development application, which will deal with front end, a client side code, and also a server side code with Express. So stay tuned for that. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know if you like this video. Give me a like as always subscribe if you're not um, if you're not and uh, if you still here watching my video thank you so much thank you so much for your support and i will see you in the next one with a full stack application where everything that i teach you will make sense even more